Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's Scam Pro Audio webcast. Tonight, we've got Bryn and Simone from Keith McMillan, and they're going to be showing you a great range of controllers, some awesome stuff, guys. But first of all, I'm sure if you're actually watching this, you've seen it on the site, the Velocity 2014 competition. Amazing prizes. I'm not going to go through them all now. There's too many to mention. They're absolutely awesome. doesn't matter what style of music you're into or whether you're doing film and video. Do check it out. You can see it on the screen right now. Go check it out. Just go to the Scam main page and just click the main banner. Do it, guys. It's running until the end of this month. So that's the 31st of May, which I believe is a Saturday. So get it done. It doesn't matter what you've got there. Just get any work that you've done. Just get it in. You're going to stand a chance of winning. Okay, so Bryn, what have we got here? Range of, I'll talk into the microphone. We brought the range of Keith McMillan products to show you this evening, uh, which I know you have in stock. Um, and as you quite really mentioned, uh, you can win one of these in the competition. Yeah, this is it's in the uh, electronic category. So. There you go. This is the product that really kind of pushed Keith McMillan instruments into the limelight with a great Kickstarter campaign. It's called QNEO. Uh, Simone we will, later will go into some depth about what it can do and why it's a bit different. Uh, but this is basically organized for drums and clip launching with Ableton. It'll work with Logic. It'll work with anything. The main difference with across all the products is that the sensor technology doesn't just work in one dimension. Generally, you've got what the sensor, and you can use tilt, you can use pressure, and sometimes where you are in the pad with this one, which we'll come on to later. Uh, the most recent product was QNexus. Uh, very similar technology, tilt etc. Very, very robust. There's a great video online where they test it by th throwing it out of a first floor window, gaffer tape to a watermelon, and then just play it afterwards. Uh, it also has, for those of you that are into your analog synths, it has a control voltage input and output and gate, so you can hook it up with all your kind of uh, Korgs, and etc. and your old SH09s and stuff from Roland. Uh, great little incredibly portable keyboard, works over USB. All these, you can have a MIDI expander box, so they'll work with MIDI as well if you don't want to use a computer. Okay. Um, for more, those with want a bit more foot control, 12-step, uh, basically you can make this out. It's a, a octave of keyboard. Uh, there again, pressure sensitive as well as the notes. You can set it to consent, say, you could move it with, say, a, a, get a miniature set of the Taurus pedals. You have that controlling the filter and actually lean on it to send controllers while playing the bass line with your feet. Uh, if you want to get a little bit more in depth with the actually sending controllers, then we have the soft step, which sends a lot of information. Every individual pad can be selected to send pressure, X and Y pressure as well, so where, which direction your foot is facing. So you could have this one selecting a patch, this one doing echo send, this one doing delay time, this one doing volume, these ones selecting individual effects blocks off on your effect unit. Incredibly versatile. Uh, you can program to do whatever you want, either with a computer or over MIDI. So okay. I think that gives you an idea of what we'll do. We'll concentrate tonight on the original QNEO uh, with Ableton to give you some hints and tips as to what's really possible. Uh, but I think at that point, we're probably best to hand over to Simone, who's much more capable with Ableton than I am. Okay, let's do this. Hello, hi, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'm Simone, Simone Tanda. I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer and K McMillan product specialist. I would like to show you in depth one of the best controllers that you can find on the market right now, that is QNEO. It's very portable, very well done and waterproof. That is a very good thing. So I have prepared an uh, Ableton Live session with a bunch of clips here, just to show you how it works as a template. This button here that activate the comma mode, this button here, allows you to switch between the different preset and templates that they prepare to you because QNEO is working very well 
with Ableton, but it can be very handy as well with Tractor, Logic, Reason, a different uh, digital audio workstation. So now let's start with the template number nine. That is the template that allows you to trigger clip in your uh, session view. So we were talking about the template number nine that basically is the template that allows you to control the session view in Ableton Live. So as a default, as you can see, you have a different color in the pod. So first thing to mention, every pod in Cunia can work by himself as a singular pod or every single corner can activate something. In this case, it can trigger clip. So there we go. This is my drum here. As you can see here, I'm gonna control the volume of my clip as a default. Okay. And I'm totally free to launch other clip. Quite easy way. We already said that this line here correspond. Uh, we have no audio at the moment, I don't know why. But this line here correspond to the stop singular general stop button on every channel so if I do this I'm gonna stop all of them together so I want to mention a few things be before get back to the to the session for example all this triangle here as a default they have a, a particular function for instance the first one is gonna decrease the BPM as you can see in my session and the second one is gonna increase it then Going to the second one, as you can see, I can activate the metronome and deactivate it. And with the other button here, I'm going to basically arm the uh, session record button that in the version 9 is very handy to record automation per clip. Then we have this button here, these two triangle here, sorry, that allows you to switch between the different channels. And as soon as you switch between a channel to another one, these four slider here, they assume a different meaning. For example, you can control with the first one, the volume again, with the second one, the pan, as you can see, and then you can open the send of the channel that is selected. So for example, if I select the channel number one and I trigger my drum, I increase the volume a little bit, and then I can send it to the return channel Number A, where I have set the fade to gray, that is a, a mixture between an EQ3 and a simple delay. So we're going. Then here, we have the general button, as I said, you can stop your session, trigger again, or prepare to record it. There we go. So these are mainly the, the basic function that you get if you select, once again, the template number nine. Other few things to, that need to be mentioned are these two bottom here that allows you to go through the different uh, clip by moving uh, the, the big rectangle that you got in the, in the session view. Or these other two that allows you to switch just between the different scene and not the, the wall rectangle. After that, we have this friend here that allows you to control the cross fader and it's very very handy a quick tip is to re basically to set to zero the cross fade that can be one of the main problem by using this kind of controller you have the ability to do this and reset it straight away to zero so that's quite quite handy so basically these are almost uh, the the basic function that you get with the uh, template number one number nine once again there's another thing that i would like to show you and basically to do that i will just drag in there a drum rack a simple one so just let me do it and there we go okay so i'm gonna create an empty clip and with this two circle here i can just resize the loop length as I like in a very, very precise way. Can you see that? So as soon as you resize it, it's not finished, I can trigger that clip.
And with this button here, that is called rhombus button, you can see that I'm going to have two new lights in the small corner in the last part. Can you see that? So as soon as you select this, you're basically coming into the clip that I have triggered, that is the uh, 606 clip, and I can program a drum Okay, so and I can quickly come back and maybe stop my clip. Okay, so this is a very cool functionality. You can just go back, program your drum and get back to the session. Okay, very easy. Now, another thing that makes Cuneo basically a very, very cool controller are the visual feedback. So you can get a visual feedback of everything you're doing from triggering clip, of course, stopping clip or moving fader, but that's not the point of what I want to do. Basically, I have prepared here this MIDI clip. As you can see, we have no fader. That means that basically this clip here has no instrument in there. It's a MIDI, MIDI clip, so I have prepared just a scale. I can get in, into it in, with more detail if you want, but what basically this did is give you a visual feedback. So instead of having the metronome, you can visualize the tempo, okay? That allows you to be more and more precise, mostly if you want to go through the drum, as I showed you before, and you can program it. Then another thing that needs to be mentioned, give me, I'm getting crazy, just a sec, there we go. Uh, do, do, do. Stop it. Okay. So back to the session. I would like to talk to you about the template number 10. So basically, this template, if we drag again a drum, allows you to use the Cuneo as a drum pot. So you are totally free to play your drum and record it. Okay, you can get a visual feedback uh, as well of uh, what you're doing, but what is very, very cool is basically that this template allows you to control effect, switch on and off, and we said before that basically you can control every single corner or you can use it as a singular pod, but when you use it in a drum mode, so as a singular pod, you can map the X and Y uh, axis and the note and the pressure. So what I've done here is basically cr just copy this template just because I don't want to overwrite it on template number four. It's exactly the same template, okay? But what I'm going to get is that I can control all the effects that you can have here in my channel. As you can see, I basically create a chain of four different beat repeats and a filter at the end is almost the same for the whole session. Number three, number four, instead of the filter, I have a delay. So basically, going back to the session launcher, this, so this is what is playing. Just add, okay. So if I go back to the template number four, now. I can control all my different beat repeats just by pressing them. So I can quickly change the mood of the track. Vocal. Triggering effect. This is a delay. I can just fade out the vocal. And leave the drum free to play. Okay. I can create a few fills. I'm gonna filter the pad out. Okay. And I wanna come back with the vocals, so I will press it and fade it in.
so you can have a lot of fun with them. So basically that's it, I was controlling all the effect in the channels just by using this singular part. So as you can see, all of them, they are basically triggering the repeat function in the bit repeat. But as soon as I leave the part free, it's not repeating anything anymore. Okay, there are any questions about that or? Okay. okay. So I can just carry on with a few other things. So if there are no questions about Qno, I would like to introduce... Yeah, uh, on Qno in general, I, I, what I'd like to see is a little bit more of how you were doing the step programming. Okay, okay. We can we can look at that. So, or I so can just if you didn't hear Bryn uh, in the studio here, he's asked about the step programming on Qno. Okay, so basically... We, we're going to load a new session, okay, so, and as we said, the template that we are going to use is the number nine, so the one that is built to control the session view in Ableton Live. So I'm going to drag in there again a 606, 606 kit, there we go. So we said that, as you can see, I have just one clip and is an empty clip, right? So I'm triggering it, and I would like to resize it. So as I showed you before, with this two circle, you can change the loop length without touching the computer, actually. So then you have to press the wrong button, and as you can see, you have a red and green different light. So if you press this one here, you are going into the step programming, okay? So like this, I'm just, Hearing one kick, there we go. I created a two quarter bar length, okay? Just to be clear. So on top of that, I can add a snare. Okay, so in this case, it's very, very useful to have a visual feedback just to control where you are in the bar. Instead of doing this, that can be pretty embarrassing on the stage, you can just, I prepare a few of them so you can, I can just see, there we go, so this is my metronome as you can see, okay, so we go in there and I can check the tempo, okay, so that, that's what's happening, that what so this is the step programming and of course you can take out all the notes you want and go back to the session view to control it okay all right so i would like to show you other few things because i have students that sometimes are stuck when they are mapping their cuneo and maybe they are using the drum the the, the drum template okay so i prepared this session here just to show you few different things. For example, I've dragged in my first audio channel just the same auto filter but is mapped in different place in my Cuneo. Because Q what really really makes Cuneo very very different from the other controller is the possibility to map the dynamic control, okay, the velocity. So once you want to map, for example, a filter in here, let's just let me drag in there a simple. There we go, drum loop. So I'm gonna get this dr drum loop. Okay. So I've mapped the first filter here. So, oh, yeah. so as you can see, it's perfectly responsive to what I'm doing. Okay. Then what I've done is mapping the second filter, okay, 
here. But what I technically mapped is another volume. So I have mapped the dynamic control. So as soon as I press it, it's filtering the clip. But as soon as I leave the, the control free, you're not going to get any effect. So it's an instant effect. OK? So everything, pretty much everything you are going to map, you can map the, the, the velocity and the actual parameter, OK? That makes things very, very powerful, but also it can create few problems. Then with the same attitude, basically, I mapped here, this controller here. I said that you can map X and Y. So what I've done here, as you can see, is map the frequency to that one of them and the, the resonance to another. So if I switch on the auto filter, can you see, I can just control it. Just with one finger, I'm moving down and up, okay, as an instant effect. I need to mention that everything, pretty much everything, can be edited here in the Cuneo editor. So basically, you can create your own preset as well as I have done with the preset number four. I've just copied the preset number 10 into the number four to don't overwrite the preset number 10. And as soon as you are in there, you can see that you have two different options, drum and grid. So basically with drum, you are going to use every single pad, okay? And you can basically control the note you are sending, the pressure, and the X and Y axis. But if you turn it into a grid mode, okay, you can see that in the grid mode, you can actually map every single corner in a different way. So you, you, you can have a mix between drum and grid. It depends on your need and what you want to do on the stage. Okay? So everything can be seriously um, customized by following your need. So you have also the advanced, uh, advanced option where you can basically change also the curve of the dynamic controlling and of course the lead respond of every single pod okay so if there's no question i would like to introduce the q nexus as well that is this controller here that brain mentioned before is the new controller and we have to mention a few things for instance that it fit perfectly with the mac and that's, this is not a coincidence, basically. So I'm going to unplug the QNU, unplug the QNexus here. OK. So basically, for let me just drag in there an analog or whatever. OK. So there we go. As you can see, we have a, a visual feedback again, a white one for the white keyboard and a blue one for the black keyboard, okay? If you are confident with the piano or the keyboard structure, you can get it easily. Then we have a pressure sensitive, okay? Velocity response that is very good. It makes the controller very, very handy, but you can deactivate it by holding Velo B, Velocity B, and get the same velocity, okay, per clip. Then another feature that you have, I have to mention is this one here. So basically, toggle A allows you to latch the note and keep the chord. Okay. And if you move by these two triangle here, changing the octave. It's triggering the chord again, so it makes the things quite cool. And what if I drag an arpeggiator that is a MIDI effect into live? Okay, and I'm using the same technique. Change the rate of the arpeggiator.
okay. So that was that function here. Let me switch off the arpeggiator. And last thing I would like to mention about this controller, oh, sorry for that, is the possibility to uh, yeah. control basically the pitch envelope. Thus moving your finger. So once again sensitivity and velocity are a very very good feature of this controller okay you can basically shift between the preset by this shift preset button okay and uh, you can have a look of every preset just by holding it and you can basically select and deselect unselect whatever you like and whatever you would have in your preset all right so have we got any question or yeah actually i, I think is, is there any questions coming up in the chat room so i can yes that's no it's uh i can go back to queue Everyone seems to have actually answered their own questions. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly by one of them, one of the members will ha have this and they know the answer, and the other one's got the man manual. Actually, actually, that's Hiram who works for us. Okay, that's that, that's a very, very, very <laughs> but, good thing. Not nice one for sat there with the manual there, right? Eh? Okay, okay. So I wish you just another function of QNEO because it's my favorite one at the moment. Uh, with what? With, with the QNEXT. Oh, of course. This, is, th this, oh, this works a lot. Uh, sorry, Bryn's as just mentioning about OSC support here. He basically, it, it works as a mute MIDI keyboard, and you can control seriously whatever you like, and you can also skip Ableton Live, because uh, with K Macmillan, you are also a MIDI adapter that basically allows you to send the signal somewhere else. So you can route your signal into your, I don't know, synthesizer, virus, whatever you like, and you can basically switch between preset and play. So you can basically add this small keyboard on top of yours and control whatever you like, okay? So that's the thing. The last thing I would like to mention about QNO is that you can be this let me check no it's not just a second sorry mm. there we go. Should be this. once again I'm gonna use it my template that is template number 10 but just re-edit by myself and if you go here as you can see now I have the visual feedback that I mentioned before just because I open a MIDI track and I'm taking the signal through the drum rack okay f and I'm sending back to QNEO so I have okay so I have a few pieces of music here okay and you can trigger different sample okay and And you can record all of this thing in a clip or in the arrangement view into Ableton and then edit them. So what I want to suggest is that even if it can seem a controller 
mostly focus on the performance, you can bring a little bit of performance in your production and you can save basically everything you're doing, also every mistakes, okay? So bring a little bit of uh, improvisation in your production is a very good thing. And if you think about it, using Cuneo, you're probably going to do things that otherwise you are not able to do it, okay? Yeah, if you want. Yeah, yeah why not? You could do, but you show them the editor on the screen. So that they can okay, but them. if you want to talk about the rock, come here and uh, let's do it. Yeah, sure, let me go. yeah. okay, we're just going to uh, bring Britain in uh, here. So while Simone opens the uh, the editor there we go. for QNEO, I'll just tell you that there Q is actually a radio. Uh, this is QNEO for the drum pad. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there is a radio backpack that you can get for it that actually allows the QNEO to be wireless uh, and actually okay. is the battery and the transmitter so you can actually walk around launching your clips from from the crowd <laughs> yeah and the other thing is to bear in mind that the majority of these uh, the key, the floor controllers actually need external power but the QNEO and QNexus will both work with iPad as well so you can just plug them straight in via the cam camera connection kit and use them for controlling the IMS-20 or any of the DJ apps you may have as well. They're all totally configurable. So you can configure it on the computer, set up the controllers you want, and then use it for controlling anything you want on the iPad. Cool. Yeah, and okay. I'll take you back to Simone. It'll show you the, the editor for QNEO. Oh, okay. So I mentioned before the, the QNEO editor and... As I said, you can create a mixture, a mixture bet between drum and grid. So basically, you can decide to have one drum pad close to a grid pad where you're going to edit different corners. Okay? So I'm going to do it for you on, on the spot. So basically, I will, sure, I will use my template number four, that is the number 10, just to, and I will take an auto filter. I will grab it as well. I don't know. Okay, same drum. There we go. So, looking at the editor. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna select preset number four. That is my one. Okay. So, there we go. Every single one has got just one note and a pressure value, okay? So I can map X, Y, and we have a return value, but I don't want to talk about it now. So if you just command them, or you know that with this MIDI button here, you can map it. I will select one value here and another one here. And there we go. Pretty easy to use. As you can see, as I'm moving on the pad, I'm controlling in the same time frequency and resonance. Okay? So that allows you to control the filter. Another quick tip to have an instant effect like this one is to map the on and off button of the effect on the same value and then you are gonna resize the value as you can see here in the browser I have 64 to 127 but I would like to say from 1 so as soon as I press the button to 127 so when you press the button the effect is activated when you don't press it is off okay so so like that, you can control whatever you like. And basically, it's the same technique I have used before when I show you how to map a bit repeat. So as soon as you leave the pad, there we go, you have no effect, OK? It's just one of the coolest things that you can do. You can use it with the auto filter, but of course, you can use it with the EQ8 on everything, every effect they would you like to have, but just for quick feel or let's do it with a, a ping pong delay same thing I'm gonna map it so I would like to map my 
I don't know, steal the filter here maybe. Okay, one here, one to the resonance. And with the dry wet, basically you can get the same result because once the dry wet is to zero, it's like almost to have an effect. But I would like to do it anyway because this is Ableton Live, so it's built to perform on the stage and everything is off. It doesn't consume CPU, okay? So once again, from 64 to 127 is the default mapping value, but I would like to turn it down to one. Okay, there we go. So, or two, it's up to you. There we go. As, as you can see, as soon as I leave the pod, it's off again, but the dry wet is to zero, so it's almost the same thing, but anyways. Okay, so this effect like this is not very easy to control because the dry wet is basically as a range from zero to 100% that personally I find too much. So I would like to recite it, something like 50%, almost here, there we go, so. So you can get the effect without messing too much, okay. But if you think about it, I just basically threw few effects into the channel so a like, cool thing that you could do is basically move all of them in a return track okay and this thing here plus the template number nine that i showed you before allows you to go through the channel maybe open a send without touching the computer go back to the template that you are using and there we go so you are using effect without losing basically the original signal. Okay, do I have any question about that? Or yeah. Everyone is super prepared. <laughs> okay. I think you explained it very well. <laughs> so, so, almost this is it. I mean, I can carry on mapping effect or uh, doing things. Do you want to mention that you've got some deals doing it? Yeah, um, what we will say is that. Uh, um, we're going to give you out a code word. Now, unfortunately, to all our American friends, this only really affects you if you're in the UK um, or um, uh, Europe. But if you, we need, we actually need a code word. Can I have uh, suggestions? We need a. Oh, that no, it's, that's boring. Co rogue. Ro rogue. Oh, yeah, fair enough. So the code word is rogue now if you email us in if you're in the uk or europe at webinar at scan.co.uk we will email you back some awesome deals that we can't possibly print on all of the keith mcmillan stuff um so whatever you want to do if you were if this has sort of tempted you and you've seen the possibilities that you can do with this controller then um please email us the word rogue that's rogue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, please email that in. We'll hit you back with some um, really, really special offers on it. Um, okay, well, um, I think that's that's been about it then. Yeah. Yeah. If um, thanks a lot to everyone in the chat room okay. who've uh, joined thanks us and <laughs> answered your own questions. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot for Hiram for being there reading the manual. Um, uh, we're going to be back, I think, in two weeks' time, uh, where okay. we've got a video webinar. Um, we've got some other stuff coming up next month. We've got Alpha Spare, which um, they're going to be. Uh, coming and demoing and i think we've got some guys like coven and some of the other pro users doing uh, some of the interviews on that one so um stay locked um here in two weeks time i think it's the cyrillite Ma well, lighting masterclass which i uh, we yeah um, the, the guys from uh, Cyrillite and all the dado light stuff uh, there's some real key stuff if you want to know about lighting for video um back here in two weeks Otherwise, thank you very much. Um, apologies for the digital mixer that decided to uh, have a bit of a wonk. But uh, that's going to get kicked down a flight of stairs very shortly. And uh, normal, ser normal service will be resumed. Okay, nice one. Thank uh, you very much. We're out of here. Thank you very much, Bye. chaps. Yay! Sorry.